either you get sensitive human beings or you get very highly educated people. But it's very seldom that you get the two together. Just like Liaquat Ali Khan sahab gave his life for Pakistan, I think Zarwat Parti, she would have given it too. She has done single-handedly much more for the women of this country than anyone really realizes. For a pretty young lady, the journey had been a long one. Her name was Rana and she came to be known as the Dynamo in Silk. With the division of the subcontinent, a new nation was born, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. I'm looking forward to making Pakistan as one of the greatest nations of the world. But the jubilation was short-lived as realization set in that millions had been displaced, families separated, homes looted and plundered. A new nation had to rise from this rubble of mass devastation. When all the refugees came in and conditions in the camps were very bad, and uh, you know you d you had a acute shortage of uh, nurses and medical staff and so on, and then she issued a call, uh, and uh, hundreds and hundreds of women responded to that call. The story of Begum Rana Liaquat goes back to the cultural capital of undivided India, Lucknow. Here, in these corridors of Isabella Thoban College, named after a great educationalist. Rana Panth understood the value of education. As the only female in her batch for a master's at Lucknow University, Rana's fate seemed decided. Little did she know that a chance meeting with the man for the moment, Nawab Zada Liaghat Ali Khan, would seal her fate. It wasn't merely an infatuation which caused him to marry her. She was a very able lady, a highly educated woman, and I can say this because she was from 10 years before me in my university and the legacy that she left for us as students was a very good one indeed. Rana Liaquat Ali Khan had married a man and a movement. Life became an intense routine as Rana found herself in the midst of political turbulence and the demands of two little boys, Ashraf and Akbar. Immediately after partition, let's talk August 14th onwards, uh, we really did not have much time with father or mother. And, uh, you know, we'd want to know what's going on. And then we'd be told that so and so is coming to meet your father, this delegation is coming, that delegation is coming and the women are coming and life just went on every day. I mean, it was a, a madhouse, should I say, uh, with people coming and going. Time was of the essence as a new nation was getting to grips with governance issues. There was dearth of virtually everything and most of all, an educated workforce. Uh, Muslims were so anti-British because it was from the Muslims that the British took away the country that they did not allow, leave alone the women, they themselves did not acquire the English language, which was the language for progress. This short-sightedness was the biggest handicap a new nation faced. An illiterate public would always blame emancipation of women for any social disintegration. She saw to it that by using this ploy of, you know, sort of getting the men to agree to that because we were saving Pakistan or we were there to help Pakistan and everybody had this Pakistan 
that you know we Pakistan has been won and we have to keep it and how are we going to keep it we were going to keep it with the women of Pakistan fighting alongside you as more and more girls came out to join hands in building a new nation Begum Sahiba established numerous organizations to answer the call for the day she was patron of about i think about 50 60 organizations but you know what she did she trained them she uh, put a committee in place and she would back out and she would say now let them do the way her vision encompassed so many different aspects of um of women's development i mean she was talking about village development she was talking about education and she was also uh what very very aware of economics in empowering women economic power as a professional she felt that she we should all have a professional training before we went into any work so she encouraged the development of skills she developed the the higher education middle education and grassroots level education of women she felt that women must be educated so that they can be economically independent people as she's always said you educate a woman and you educate a family unlike a lot of people who start had started complaining by that time that women didn't come out and do social work unless they were paid you know social work as a career she said i think this is a very healthy sign it means that they are willing to earn they want a career rana liaqat had succeeded in getting the women of pakistan together but there were far too many hats and too many organizations that had to be brought under one roof thus the formation of the all pakistan women association in 1949 filled a leadership vacuum and set the pace for women development somehow women have always stayed behind in leadership because they have lacked uh, the unity by the women themselves they've lacked the courage to face um, a problem and to uh, come out with the right answers social set who normally you know just spend their time in parties and so on she got them to go out and do social work go into slums and so on which i think is a, is a good she was an inspiration for everybody in the years to follow the old pakistan women association became synonymous with women empowerment every day brought with it new and fresh challenges there was a huge cyclone the people from the locality came and they said ek masjid bana ke de hame ye to isme cyclone mein ud gayi to is came to karachi to beg saab and they come beg saab ko kehte hain ki masjid bana ke do she says salima we never paid a masjid before <laughs> और शीशद के अच्छा ठीक है उनसे कहना कि अगर वो एक मकतब भी बनाए उसके साथ आई विल गिव देम 10000 रुपीस वी वर फाइटिंग विद वन ऑफ द कम्युनिटी वुमेन हमने वी वर टेलिंग हर कि देखो आंख तुम्हारी लाल हो गई है मुझे ड्रॉप्स डालने दो इसमें ये सही हो जाएगी क्लियर हो जाएगी शी सेड नाइक नहीं नहीं पता नहीं तो आपने क्या डाला होगा क्या सो बेंग साहब वाज सिटिंग देयर सो शी सेड गिव इट टू मी गिव इट टू मी गिव इट टू मी and she that and she sat like that and she put that rock ke meri aankh kharab nahi hai lekin phir bhi mere dal rahi hu just to show you then all those girls all those they, they started acha baaji mere mein dal do mere mein bhi dal do mere mein bhi dal do you know that i mean she used to do that she used to take the first step but success always comes at a price and there was no shortage of cynics who were dead against education of women the so called mullahs were deadly against her because she was trying to get the women out of the house to do work for the uh, society and come out of your burkhas and all that sort of stuff and they thought that was entirely against our religion which of course it isn't but they were, my father himself had a big uh, uh, thing with them to explain that my wife is hardly going around uh, corrupting the women of pakistan despite the critics the apwa family became a close knit affair and continued to grow Rana Liaqat had used imagination and skills. She had this an institution almost of Afwa husbands. Otherwise, I think the greatest hurdle in a woman working in her home and out of it 
is the fact that there are many priorities that that woman has to meet. But in talking to our husbands and our families, she got the support of the entire family to her work. Most impressive were the family laws that were introduced and you know at that time it seemed such a bold and daring thing to do but then obviously the very right thing to do. The Begums never shirked from getting their hands dirty but that did not stop the cynics and they could not have been more cruel as philanthropic zeal began to be interpreted as a big math culture and became the butt of society jokes. This is all part of the whole culture of um, the whole whole patriarchal narrative. The women who were going out at that point happened to be smart women. Who were the people who could help in that time? It was people whose husbands were CSP officers. There were people who had money, who could afford to help uh, and go and work voluntarily while the poorer women or the middle class women or the, even the other people went into professions. So really, you can't call it a Begum culture. A single bullet tore into the heart of an unsuspecting nation. In 1951, Liaghat Ali Khan was assassinated and Rana left a homeless widow. I don't remember her really comforting us. She was in such a state. I think uh, we were sort of cuddling up to her and um, she was not uh, really with, uh, with us at all. I mean, she was in a total state. I've never seen that in my life before. And that went on for days and days. Uh, Miss Miles was again uh, a strength, a pillow strength to all of us at that time. Because my mother was really devastated. You cannot give up now. Those who killed your husband would love to see you break. He is gone, but you are alive. Perhaps it is in your mission to lead the women of Pakistan out of their unhappy plight, like those dearest to you led the men. The words had struck home. The widow suddenly ceased and the Begum was back. taught her husband and she was guiding him also. She never finished with guiding. You are doing this right, it's wonderful, carry on. And she was a wonderful wife. And for East to have such a determined person is very rare. As a philanthropist, Rana had done almost the impossible. APWA received consultative status with the government of Pakistan, UNICEF and the United Nations and built alliances with international organizations. But within her own little world, her two little boys needed her attention and circumstances forced her to take up positions abroad to become the Islamic world's first women ambassador. And so I asked her, I said, you know, why did you take this assignment? And she turned around and she said, well, it's, you know, very simply, she said, I needed the money. And she did all that for us because uh, who was going to pay for all our uh, education and all the rest of it. Because when father died, as you know, I mean, everybody knows, I think, by now it's part of history that he didn't leave anything. The woman and the activist never really left Pakistan. Rana had been honored many times over by the international community, and she returned to her homeland as the first woman governor in Pakistan and continued to be the leading light for the Apwa family till her last days. I would say she was the first feminist of Pakistan, believed a lot that women must work. And I think that is the reason today that you see more women in every field in Pakistan. Rana Liaqat passed on on the 13th of June, 1990. 
but even today her stature looms large for in the face of adversity wherever women face problems wherever there is need for development whenever there is a crisis apwa workers know who to look up to the dynamo is forever charged Thank you.